spirit that generally comes along with this is a spirit of memorabilia. You ever met some people that just can't get rid of some of those old cherished objects that they have? They have a real attachment to that object, to that old-fashioned whatever it is they have. And if something happens to it, I'm not talking about they, well, you know, something happened, no big deal. I'm talking about a person who breaks down over the fact that some of his memorabilia has been destroyed. That is a spirit of memorabilia that has attached itself to that person. A spirit of recollection. By that I mean a person who loves to do nothing but sit around and just recollect all of the former good times that he had in his life. And you find some people that habitually do this. They just think back, do you remember when? And there they go telling you another do you remember when story. And you've already heard that story before. But for some reason, they are so caught up with their past, they want to tell that story to you again. And you don't let them tell you, and they get sad about the whole thing. They think that you've rejected them then. And they're constantly recalling to the mind all of the former days of good that they had. Remember when we did this? Remember when we went hunting and fishing? And remember when the great snowstorm came in 42? Always wanting to remember something, but dwelling in the past, not living in the present. They don't know anything about what's going on now. But they've got dates memorized. They've got facts memorized in the past. They know about all the details that happened in their past life, and they're always wanting to recount these again and again and tell you about them. A failure attitude. A person who just feels like that he's always unsuccessful. And, of course, this can be she. I may say he generically, but it can be she. They always feel unsuccessful. Every time they try something, I, just, I know I can't do that. Now, some of these things, you see, won't apply to you. You may be the person that thinks you can do everything. You may have a demon, too. You see. Just like what I said earlier about these deliverance ministries and books, generally demons are acting in some excessive realm. Either you're too happy or you're not happy enough. You're always thinking about the past or you never think about anything. It's an excess either to the right or to the left of some medium where most people should be. Now, you may come up against a difficult situation and think, well, this is really difficult. But that doesn't mean you've got a failure attitude that always, you hear some people, they start something, I know I can't do that. I just know that I can't. I'll try it, but I know that it won't work. I just know that it won't work. That's a failure attitude in a person. And if it's chronic, then it's demonic. Fluctuations in a person's mood. People that are moody need to go through deliverance. They can just be excited all of a sudden and then turn around the next moment and just be sad about something. That's abnormal for a person's mood to fluctuate that much over that small of a time period. Great excitement over small trivial matters, as well as the reverse, great sadness over small trivial matters. Some of the comic movies have been made about things like this. You find an individual that just gets excessively excited over something that's relatively small. You think that's a little bit abnormal. That's probably a demon then. This is a big one that you see in people that continually as you talk with people, you see a person who can't stay on one train of thought. He'll start telling you something before you know it. He's forgotten that train of thought and he's on another train of thought. And he goes so long on that and then he forgets what he was saying and then he gets on another train of thought. A person who can't stay on one subject, they're always changing their train of thought. You see, dear friends, I trust that you see as we go through this, all these things are abnormal. A person should not be like that. A person should be able to talk about something intelligently and not talk about it for a while and then, and then forget, oh, what was I talking about? And they'll act real silly and goofy about it and then go on to something else. They forget that before they ever end up with it. They forget what they were saying and they go on to talk about something else. Dirty thoughts, some mental problems. Mental stress, mental blockage. A person's trying their best to tell you a story, 
and then a mental block comes to the mind and they forget the punchline. They forget the whole important detail that the story was about. And again, that can happen to anyone. But when it happens all the time, then you've got mental blockage. You have a demon that's blocking you whenever you get to the conclusion of saying what you want to say. You forget what it is you wanted to say. An individual who can't express themselves, they'll always say, I, I don't know how I should say this, or, or do you understand what I'm saying, or do I need to rephrase it another way? They're so insecure, they don't think that they can actually say what they mean to say, and they feel they can't express themselves understandably. The opposite of that is one who always misunderstands what another person says. Always are misunderstanding what you say. Another mental problem, self-pity and overt desire for attention. Many times a person will actually contract a psychosomatic illness because of their overt desire for attention. You'll never get them healed of that because they're using their sickness to gain attention from people. They have a chronic desire for attention. They do not want to be left alone. And if they ever see anyone maybe talking quietly in the corner, immediately what comes to their mind is they're, they're talking about me. I've done something wrong. What are you criticizing me for? And they have no proof of that at all. But they're suspicious because they see two people talking in a corner together. And they've got such a desire for attention that it backfires on them when they think that, oh, no one loves me. Everyone is against me. Everyone's talking about me behind my back. I know why I didn't get that raise at work. Someone else did. No one loves me. That's a desire for attention, a spirit of self-pity in a person. Loneliness. Have you ever met someone who right in the midst of a crowd is the loneliest person there could be because he can't identify with anything or associate with anyone? Just lonely. And you feel for the individual because he's right in a crowd of people. And, of course, generally a person who, have a, who has a spirit of loneliness likes to spend their time alone. But whenever they are in a crowd, they're still lonely. Rather than feeling the warmth of the activity and presence and fellowship of other people, they feel nothing but coldness from everyone. Spirit of loneliness. A spirit of hysteria. <coughs> I remember dealing with one child, never seen anyone like him, but he had, a, he had a spirit. He was a young child, six, seven years old, a little boy who had a demon of hysteria. And his mother came to our church in Tennessee. And whenever the least thing would happen, he'd be out, you know, playing with some of the other boys after church and fall and scrape his knee. And you should have should have heard the blood-curdling screams he would begin to give over something minor. It was always minor, a small scratch, and he would come in panting and breathing and perspiring and screaming, Mother, 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 his dad didn't come. Mother, 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 help me, help me, just screaming and screaming. And um, we had to deal with that as a demon because she would always eventually get him calmed down by patting him on the back, soothing him, saying, that's okay, you know, nothing's broken, you've not done any major damage, but he would see a little trickle of blood and just become hysterical over it. And as a result, we traced it immediately back to a demon. It was a demonic problem of, in the realm of hysteria that needed to be corrected. Now, it doesn't have to be in children. It can be in adults that get uh, hysteric over things that might occur. A spirit of anger is simply hysteria. You're, you're, you're hysterical uh, in that you're angry over something to an inordinate degree. That also needs to be dealt with. People who always need constant encouragement. I actually feel in my spirit right now that I'm talking over some of your heads. That maybe you haven't been around long enough or maybe you haven't met people with these needs. So there's nothing I can do about it, but go ahead and talk to those that are here and maybe you can come back and hear the tape, <clears throat> meet some people, and it'll make sense to you. But there are some people who need constant encouragement. If you're not patting them on the back every day, encouraging them. Well, you know, we're going to see you at church next week. 
Generally, we're talking about Christians here. We're not talking about people in the world. We're talking about believers. You've got to kind of encourage them to come back to church next week, encourage them to read their Bible, encourage them to pray. Because if you don't, all of a sudden they'll just sit down on themselves. But if you'll pat them on the back, whoops, they'll get up and start going quickly. And you stop encouraging them, and they'll sit down on you, on God, on themselves, time and time again. A person who has to habitually recount money whenever he's counting money, <clears throat> he's always afraid he made a mistake the first time, so he counts it the second time. Then he thinks he made a mistake then, he counts it again. That's a demon. The same is true with the individual who makes sure that he does or doesn't, depending on which game you're playing, step on the cracks in the sidewalk. If you're not supposed to, and you do, then you're in trouble. And you know that you're in trouble. Or if you are supposed to step on cracks, you know that little game that people play? And some people have that as a hobby horse. Whenever they go walking, they step on every crack as they go past it. And if they miss one, get home in bed. About a half an hour later, I oh, remember that crack I missed. Up out of the bed, there they go, get dressed, head back down, five blocks down the street side to step on that crack they missed. And there are people that will do that. Habitually, they've got a demon problem. They've got to always either step on the crack or miss it. You see, there are different games you play. Either step on the crack, you break your mother's back, miss it, then I forget the rhyme that goes with that. Or uh, a person who always is uh, repeating directions. You give them directions and they repeat them back to you. And they want to make sure they have them to such a degree that they always want to repeat and repeat and repeat again the directions. They're simply unsure of themselves. But you'll meet people like that. As well as a lot of other areas in the mental realm. Let's go on to the spiritual realm where we see evidences of the presence of demons. <clears throat> Probably the greatest evidence is spiritual indifference or apathy. Over spiritual matters. I know some people that I've met right here in this church that are indifferent and apathetic about spiritual matters. They just, they can't seem to get interested in reading their Bible, in praying, in fasting, they just can't get interested in it. And if they do it, they do it because it's a religious duty to them, but they have no interest for it at all. They've got a demonic problem, and it's in the spiritual realm, and it concerns spiritual apathy and spiritual indifference. Because if a person is saved and baptized in the Spirit, or even if he isn't saved, he should want to study his Bible. He should want to pray. He should want to come to church. He should want to have fellowship with others with like mind. But some people you meet are just so indifferent. They don't want to be a reprobate. They don't want to live out in the world. They want to be a Christian, but yet uh, they lack that initiative and that desire to read their Bible, to pray, to study. Sluggishness, I'm talking about in the spiritual area. <clears throat> a person does read their Bible, but they're always dragging their feet in it. Sluggishness. A big triple demon, unbelief, doubt, and skepticism. I had to, we had to deal with this in my mother before she could ever receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because you'll come across people uh, for whom it's impossible for them to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit because of chronic doubt, unbelief, and skepticism. Now you just as soon not pray for them to receive until you can deal with those doubts and unbeliefs and skepticisms that they have. And they're chief skeptics even when they want to believe. You see, here's an individual who wants the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But he says, for some reason, I just, I just don't believe I can get it. I just can't believe that I'm going to speak in tongues whenever you pray for me. Or real skeptical about the matter. Not rejecting it. That's another problem if it's in a Christian. Not rejecting it, wanting it but still doubtful about the whole thing, skeptical about the whole thing. Generally, this falls under the category of your people who always are wanting proof text for everything. They have a spirit. Give me a proof text for that. They want to argue with you over something. Then they have a demon of religious, spiritual unbelief, skepticism, and doubt. If you can't show it right word for word in the Bible, then they won't believe you. Doubt and unbelief. 
And you can just go on and on and on trying to convince them of the validity of the baptism of the Holy Spirit or of the wearing of the head covering, but they nonetheless will simply refuse to believe because of doubt and unbelief. Spirits of deception as well as spirits of heresy <clears throat> come in the spiritual area. A good example of deception is the very prevalent spiritual religious deception of poverty. Some people have a poverty demon. Yeah. They think the only way you can ever please God and be spiritual is to have nothing. And if you ever have anything like money, you know, if they see you open your wallet and rather than tens, you've got a couple of hundreds in there, right away they've got a spirit of poverty and they think you couldn't be spiritual because you've got two $100 bills in your billfold rather than two $10 bills like they have. That's a demon of poverty. And you've got to watch out for those people because they'll try to put you under their poverty spirit. Yeah. They're already under it themselves. They're already controlled by that demon. But they'll try to put you under there and make you feel bad if you ever have anything. That's right. Oh, you shouldn't have had a new car. should have gotten a used one. Or it shouldn't have been an 80 model. should have been a 75 model. God's not pleased with people that buy 1980 models. It's too new. It costs too much. That's a demon of poverty there. Why did you, whenever you bought that appliance that you bought, why did you buy the best? You don't need the best. You can get by with something less. That is a demon of poverty. That works, dear friends, through most Christians. You know, while they're out in the world, you know, they go to church on Sunday, and on their job, they're just busy, busy, busy making money. But that's what they made themselves. If they ever find out that God did something for you, oh, they'll really fight with that, although they drive a Cadillac themselves. They won't let you have one unless you worked for yours and earned it. Now, if someone gave it to you, that's not fair. That's a spirit of poverty then. They can't put up with anyone that has anything that calls himself a believer and that says that they got what they have from the Lord. That's a demon of poverty. A demon of uh, religious holidays. People sometimes won't give up the holidays even when you can show them from their own encyclopedia that it is rooted in paganism. Still won't give it up. Demon of religious holidays. Demon of religious busyness. They'll come to church but miss the meeting. They'll sweep. They'll do anything you want them to do. Sweep the walk, mow the lawn, pick up the cigarette butts that the deacons left out behind the building. They'll do whatever, whatever you want them to do except sit still and listen to the word. They'll be busy in religious activity as long as you want them to be. Fix anything in the church for you. They'd, they'd even help, help preach for you if they had to. But don't make me sit there and listen and actually be still and learn anything about the Bible. Busy, busy, busy. That's an active demon, a spirit of religious busyness. Another spirit, resistance to the truth. Another spiritual deception is in the area of health foods. Now, I put it under spiritual category, although food deals with the physical because it is a deceiving spirit. Another spirit's unnatural praise. I remember reading about one woman who said hallelujah in such a strange way, the way she pronounced it, and said it so unnaturally loud that finally the pastor of the church uh, got awakened to the fact by the Holy Spirit that that was not the Holy Spirit speaking through that woman or influencing her that was a demon and she was saying praise the Lord but remember in Acts 16 16 that girl possessed with the spirit of divination said these men are servants of the most high God which show unto us the way of salvation spoke the truth but did it under the wrong impulse the wrong spirit so they had to cast that demon of unnatural false praise out of the woman I remember preaching in a place one time where I had to deal with this. There was a woman, we were singing in the spirit after the meeting, and she just took off by herself with an unnatural wailing and moaning, so high-pitched that it was above everyone else in the church. And we were all trying to worship the Lord in the spirit, but just goes on, whoa, just on and on and on like that. 
and that is a demon of unnatural false praise that needs to be cast out of the person some people there's nothing wrong with loud praise don't miss the point but there is such a thing as unnatural praise it is so loud and so boisterous that it's really not the holy spirit it's coming from a false spirit now the same thing can be true with speaking in tongues there are many people who've had a manifestation of tongues but it's been by the wrong spirit i remember the case of one girl that every time she spoke in tongues her i believe it was her left arm just went like this whenever she'd start speaking she'd just pray in tongues just like you did here would go her arm round and around and around in circles then whenever she stopped praying in tongues her arm stopped then whenever it was time for everyone to pray in the spirit together then she would pray and she'd start doing her arm like this now that should alert you that person has a <laughs> that person has a problem and you see rather than trace it back to her arm it really goes back to the tongues because it only happened whenever she spoke in tongues and you see a spirit can possess someone in another in another country and learn their language let's say like chinese and then whenever the person dies uh, in which the spirit had previously lived and he happens to come to this country then he can simply possess a person and speak through them in chinese and the person will think and we might all think that's tongues because that's a foreign language the individual never learned but the demons can counterfeit that and if they happen to know another language from another place they can whenever you actually pray for some to receive the baptism if there's a lot of sin and problems in their life and a lot of other areas we can't get into rather than get the baptism of the holy spirit they can get a false spirit it's not your fault that they do sometimes they go about it seeking it the wrong way talking about seeking the baptism and you know end up at some false religious cult meeting trying to get the baptism of the holy spirit the mormons believe in speaking in tongues so do the jehovah's witnesses so do a lot of other false cults they believe in praying in other languages so how do you think they got that they got it from demons but what about some of these um unnatural manifestations of tongues that we hear in some charismatics now languages can be strange because there are thousands of them in the world today but sometimes i can just detect in my spirit that's unnatural it can be a really strange language and still be a true language that is a manifestation of one's prayer language in the spirit that is a gift from the holy spirit but at other times it can be so strange and so unusual some people you just hear just kind of rattle along like that that's not tongues friends now i'm serious about that that is not tongues that is a demon that's manifesting itself through the individual and they'll try to do it fast to try to get everything covered up and they might do it unconsciously but there are no words there's no language there it's just a lot of gurgling and mumbling along and i've heard more than one charismatic say that they're charismatic and speak like that and nothing ever really come out that's a false spirit and you need to start back in square one with the baptism you don't have the baptism yet need to have that spirit cast out of you and get the baptism of the holy spirit so you get a language from the lord well it's quiet <laughs> you're going to listen to yourself pray now <laughs> hallelujah we'll go on a spirit of self-righteousness and here's another very tragic one that many people have a spirit of blasphemous thought he doesn't want to think blasphemous thoughts against God, but he sometimes can't help himself. He begins to think in his mind, I hate Jesus. I hate the blood. I hate God. And then he thinks, no, I'm a Christian. I, I can't think thoughts like that. But he nonetheless, uncontrollably, thinks in his mind. He'll never say that. If it comes out, you're dealing with another spirit. But he'll never say it. It's in his mind, and it'll just come all of a sudden. And it will be a blasphemous thought against Jesus, like, I wish he would never have been raised from the dead. Oh, no, I can't think that. No, he'll go back on that. But then he'll think that same thought again. I wish I never would have been saved. And then they'll go back on that again. A spirit of blasphemous thoughts that has infested and infected more than one person. Okay, physical area. All 
of these areas are evidences, telltale signs that point towards the presence and activity of demons. If you know the sign, then you know how to get to where the sign's pointing. In the physical area, drug addiction is always, obviously, a demon. Now, it can be drugs as you think of them, amphetamines, barbiturates, hallucinogens, or it can be medication like insulin that you are addicted to it. You won't get off your insulin for your diabetes. It can be cigarettes. It can be alcohol. It can be a lot of different things. Drug addiction. Another spirit is a spirit of worldly dance. Many have been the times where I've seen people who said they were baptized in the Spirit in a charismatic meeting dancing in a manner in which they shouldn't. And it's a demon of worldly dance that they picked up when they were in the world that they still have with them. And sometimes um, I was raised in a family with nothing but cheerleaders. Both of my sisters were cheerleaders from start to finish. Until, I believe my little sister, my older sister, was already through with school, into the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I told her, you better get out of that cheerleading business because that's a sin in God's eyes. Those cheerleaders gyrating them, their hips and those little mini skirts with their little pom-poms that they have, that's, that's wrong, that's demonic to do if a person is a Christian, especially if a person is baptized in the Holy Spirit. And one way that you can tell a person has this is watch them whenever a secular tune comes on. They start beating to it. Start thumping their foot, start nodding their head. Don't even say amen because I know it affects some of you here. They hear that old worldly rock and roll beat. I guess I'm talking more to you young people than anyone else. You hear that old worldly rock and roll beat, that drum roll, and all of a sudden you find yourself just beating to it. Tapping your foot, nodding your head, thumping your fingers, twitching to it, going back and forth. You still have a spirit that you need to deal with that's never been cast out of you yet. That should have no appeal to you whatsoever. And there you see it doesn't have a conscious appeal. You wouldn't actually own the record yourself or play it yourself, but when you hear it somewhere else, you just start beating with the tune. But you've got to know your authority in Christ and... Um, you can deal with things like that. Now, many times evil spirits, whenever a person is new into the charismatic walk, will try to bring back to your mind as you're driving on the road a worldly tune. Now, that doesn't mean you're demon-possessed or anything like that, but many times will a spirit try to bring back to your mind a worldly tune. But I want to tell you that thought of that tune is demonic. And if you will simply resist it, in the name of Jesus, it will leave because I saw it leave more than one time. You know, whenever you get a tune in your mind, it's absolutely next to impossible to ever get rid of the thing until it just goes away by itself. But you try it, and I'll show you. It'll work. You resist that tune in the name of Jesus, and it will leave you then. And it'll leave supernaturally. You don't have to, you know, think, all right, now is it gone? All of a sudden, it'll just be gone. And that's proof of the fact that's not just a fault. That's a demon, a principality that's been sent against you, that brought that tune back to your mind. You didn't just happen to think that up from your subconscious mind, as the psychologist will say. Mm -hmm. A demon came against you with the thought of that tune. And if you'll resist it, then it'll go. Physical area, spirit of accident. Some people are always, they're just butterfingers, they're always dropping things, dropping glass things, breaking them. Now, you might never have thought, you see, of all these evidences that point to demons, but you should because they do. Anyone can accidentally drop something. But how many have been the times, again, when you, when you have known someone, they, they could never hold on to something. It always would drop. It would break. They're always bumping into someone with their car. They're always hitting something with a lawnmower they shouldn't hit. They're always breaking some of the china in the house and a whole bunch of other different things that we could say. A spirit of accident. Everywhere they go, accident lies right in their path. They can't get away from it. They try to get away from anything. I just won't touch anything, and still something happens. They catch their own clothes on fire then. They back up so far from the china cabinet, they get up next to the fireplace, and there goes their clothes on fire. And it's frustrating. I've known people like that, and it's frustrating because 
You don't mean to break things, but you're always causing accidents. And they're called accident-prone people. <laughs> but we know they've got demons, though. They've got an accident demon that causes them always to be in the midst of accidents and trouble. A person can have in the social area, in the physical area, a social spirit. Likes to go to weddings, funerals, dances, openings of new malls, dinners at country club. You got to be in, you got to be in some social context where you're going to have balloons, parties, or whatever you have. Always got to be in some social context. Probably a social spirit. Then there's another big category under physical category, physical area, speech and behavioral idiosyncrasies. Speech and behavioral. Now, a demon that falls under this is talkativeness. I think some people need to deal with talkativeness. As a spirit, that's a speech idiosyncrasy they have, always talking. Another in the same category is a loud voice. Uh, we rented a place from a fellow one time who you literally... You couldn't talk to him on the telephone with your ear up next to it. You literally could hold the telephone and stand on the other side of the room and hear what he had to say. <laughs> His voice is way too loud, abnormally loud. He has the demon of a loud voice. Nothing wrong with a person being able to talk, maybe with a little more volume than someone else. But again, we're talking about abnormality. And you couldn't talk to him on the phone with your ear there because just bursting sound, he just had a tremendous voice person's got too loud of a voice, they've got a spirit. Another spirit under speech and behavioral is silliness. Always wanting to make light of things and be silly about things. Disfigurement. Likes disfiguring their face or something. Making faces. They get pleasure out of making faces in the mirror making faces to you, making faces at people as they drive by on the expressway for no reason. We just do all these faces at people. <laughs> That's disfigurement, demon. Absence of normal reflexes. Some people are so cold it's like they're dead. You can't get them to respond like you're supposed to whenever someone, you know, does something to you. Now, just the opposite is true and exaggeration of other uh, physical features. I'll give you a couple examples. Again, both of them in the extreme area. You see, some people sit in their chair and they sit just like this. Their shoulders are back, their arms are up, they are as straight as a ramrod, and they will not move. That is a demon. And other people, uh, their head is about on the floor. They're slouched over so far in the chair, they're way in the back of the chair, slouched way over. That is a behavioral idiosyncrasy that a person has that shows you have some type of demonic problem. And you see an, an excess in both areas. E either you don't have reflexes or some of the ones that you have are too profound. Either you're sitting too straight or you're not sitting straight enough. Behavioral idiosyncrasies. Another one is muttering. People that habitually mutter to themselves. So just, you walk by them and they're just kind of talking. Not talking to anyone, but they're talking to themselves, just muttering. A lot of old people do that. That's a demon that they've been possessed by. They just sit there and just, just talk and talk and talk, just muttering to themselves. That's a demon that needs to be cast out of them. All right, I already covered facial expressions under disfigurement, but something else we could say about the facial expressions, of course, concerns the eyes of the individual, in the physical area, They'll sometimes be glazed over. They'll sometimes have a, too much of a spark of fire in them. You look in the individual's eye and you can see these things. Too glazy, too hazy. There's really no color. You've seen some people's eye. You've seen a dead fish's eye before? <laughs> it is so hazy. It's kind of like, you know, weak tea or something. It's so hazed over. There's really not much to it. Some people have hazy eyes. I don't mean, you know, hazel brown, I mean hazy, just cloudy. There's a cloud covering their eye. It's not blue, it's not green, it's not black, it's not brown, it's not gray, it's just 
all in between hazy. In other people, it's too profound. It's like sparks of fire shoot out of their eyes. Their eyes are so brilliant in color. That's probably a problem, demonic problem that they have. Some people just, uh, you can never get a smile out of them. We're talking about facial expressions here. They habitually have a stone look on their face. A lot of old people have this. They will not smile. They have a stone-faced expression. <clears throat> on the other hand, many of your Hollywood celebrities always have a fake smile. You remember all the pictures and the annuals when you were growing up, and it was so hard to smile when you had to, but when you didn't want to, and it was just it was one of these. Just You're trying to show your teeth and your gums and your lips, but it wasn't a smile. You just kind of grimaced. And so many people are like that. They just walk around with a fake half smile on their face. Of course, you can never be a model like that. What makes a model is you can smile good all the time. You've got a spirit in, too. All right, let's go on to the domestic area. People that have chronic marital problems, marriage is always on the rocks. Maybe that's due to the fortune teller you or your wife or both of you visited that you need to deal with and faith will never reconcile anything until you deal with a demonic cause same with the children children that are too rebellious you claim them by faith nothing seems to be happening maybe there's some problem in your home as far as demons are concerned maybe the child has been to a magic charmer when he was young and he'll never come to the Lord until you deal with that as a demon failing grades in a child that in other areas is reasonably intelligent <clears throat> not everyone has to make straight A's of course but when you can do everything else but for some reason you get to school and it's always C's and D's and F's and you're trying maybe you need a little paddle on the back end called the Board of Education if that doesn't do it <coughs> then maybe you are trying hard at school, but all you can get is C's and D's and F's. Then maybe you need to cast out some type of spirit that's affecting the child as far as, as, far as his grades are concerned. Finances, misplacement of finances in the home, misuse of finances. The same is true with one's possessions. So the devil always causing things to break down chronically in your home another good sign of demonic subjection and oppression is the habitual loss of a job by the breadwinner of the family gets hired and he gets fired he gets hired and he gets fired he gets hired and he gets fired never can keep a job many people have this problem many times it can be traced back to the demonic realm now if you go back to 2 Corinthians 2 just close and looking at our verse here again and that's just a small list of what could have been a lot larger and longer so that you'll know how to recognize things in your own life and the lives of others as well and you watch people friends I don't mean watch them critically to, to criticize people but for your own education in this area and for your own experience you watch people as you meet them at the store, in the mall, at the bank, the postman. You watch them and see what their little behaviors are. Are they kind of strange in some of the things they do? Well, pinpoint what is strange about them. You pinpoint that and you've got a spirit that's affecting them in that area. And just about everyone has some behavioral problem. They're overboard or underboard in one area or another. There are very few people who are, are sensible and logical and on an even keel and walk on a, a straight basis all the time. They've got some little problem, and it generally takes something to trigger it, and it'll start off again. And it may lay dormant for a week, but then you say the wrong thing, and you trigger that in them, and that demon will begin to manifest itself in whatever peculiarity that the individual has. Now, let me say something else while I think about it. I guess I'll go ahead and cover it here in this message since we've got some time left. Generally, the way in which a demon works in an individual's life is to select a particular inborn or acquired weakness that the person might have 
And then he attempts to associate himself with that weakness, thereby hiding behind it, which prevents people unknowledgeable in the area of deliverance and demons from ever detecting him. Why? They'll say, well, that person's always kind of been like that. Whatever the strange thing is about them, you'll say, well, they've been like that from birth. Now, maybe from birth they didn't have a demon. It was something inborn that they had. It was some mental disorder that they got um, genetically. But you see, what a demon will try to do is come in and get behind that so that no one can detect he's there. You'll think, that's my son. He always is throwing a temper tantrum like that. And you try to deal with that and don't recognize that although those first two times that he threw a t temper tantrum, it was just him doing it, now it is an evil spirit behind whatever peculiarity that his personality had so that you'll never recognize unless you're knowledgeable in this area that you need to deal not with the outer uh, results but with the root cause of the problem that you have and most of the time this is what they'll do they'll find a person they'll find something in the person's personality that is a little bit out of kink it's a little bit out of whack and, uh, you know, they're not going to come right in and turn, you know, a nice, quiet person into a loud talker. But since the person was already quiet, they'll come in and make them too quiet then. You see, a person before that was naturally just a little bit louder in volume than others. A demon will come in and work behind that and really make the person have a loud voice. And you see, this is the reason why they do that, and it's very smart, very intelligent, because they're going to hide behind something that's already in the person to begin with. That way no one will detect it. That way you might not detect it in yourself. You'll think, well, I've always been that way. Well, yes, you've always been that way, but maybe the first two times you did whatever it is you do wrong, you just did it because that's what you did. But after that, a demon moved in behind the scenes, and now he's the one who causes you to always have that particular problem that you have in your life. Most people don't recognize this. That's why they just, they think it's their fault or their child's fault or their spouse's fault because as long as they've known them, they've done that. But if you go back far enough, you know, they didn't do that before birth. You got to go back to a beginning somewhere. And when you go back far enough, you find out that a demon attached itself to that person in his personality behind that abnormality that they had, that idiosyncrasy. And as a result, he'll probably stay there forever because psychiatrists and psychologists will never recognize that. They'll try to deal with a problem rather than the root cause. And he'll probably stay there forever until someone recognizes him. So 2 Corinthians 2.11, we'll leave you with, don't. Be ignorant of Satan's devices, lest he gain advantage over you. That's what the verse is saying. Don't be ignorant of his devices, lest he gain advantage over you. So what we've given you here this morning is some of the signs that point towards the presence and activity of evil spirits. For a complete list of Brother